let's look at clean development mechanism. <clears throat> First, look at the image on the left hand side. Yeah, look at the image on the left hand side and see what is written on the right hand side. Take about 30 seconds. Okay, I want you to just look at the slide for 30 seconds. After which I'll ask you a series of questions as we always do. <clears throat> first, I'll ask you questions and then I'll explain. Okay. So the first question to all of you is, you can use the chat window if you want. The first question to all of you is, as per this figure, yeah, the fund flow is from which direction to which direction, which means you have two types of countries, developed countries under Annex 1 and all others in non-Annex. Yeah, so the fund flow is from which type of country to which type of country. Can anyone try answering it? It's okay if it is wrong. So the picture you see a fund flow. Very good. Nigar says developed to developing. Anyone agrees with her? Yeah, A to NA, which means annex to non-annex countries. Good. From annex to developing countries, developed to developing countries. Excellent. That's that's super. Now the second question is, uh, where is the project located? I know you have not even explained uh, the concept, but I'm still asking questions, but it's still okay. Let's, let's try to uh, get this out. Where is the project located? Means which country is the project located? <clears throat> non annex country, okay? Which means in the developing country. Good, it is in the developing country, good. Now, the fund flow is from developed to developing country. The project is located in the developing country. What does the developed country get in return? The question is, what does the developed country get in return? Even partial answer is okay. Or does it get anything at all? Credit points, okay. CER units, excellent. CFT is what? I'm not sure what is CFT. <clears throat> Certificate, yes. CER unit, excellent. Now, since some of you have said it, now let's explain. Let me explain this, this to the whole class. Last class, what did we see? So I wanted to compare these two figures. It's very, very interesting. I'm just uh, going back to the previous slide. Sorry, yeah. Do you remember this? I think we discussed at length. Emitter A, one country. Emitter B, this guy has produced excess carbon dioxide. What does he do? He, quote unquote, transfers the carbon dioxide to this country and pays some money. But we understood that it is not a physical transfer. It is only an assumed a transfer. Okay, so this is simple carbon trading. Now, how is cdm different from carbon trading? cdm is slightly different, but the principle remains the same, somewhat similar. Again. Companies in Annex 1 country, which is developed country, projects in developing country. So I'll, I'll give an example here. I think example will make it a little easier for us to appreciate it. <clears throat> Just give me a sec. Yeah. So this is, let's say, US. This is, let's say, Bangladesh. The same example that I gave yesterday. Yeah. US is spending money. And in fact, there is something left out, not just money, it also gives technology sometimes. Technology to Bangladesh to set up what? To set up, let's say, a solar project in Bangladesh. Now, please remember, this is the first difference. In carbon trading, what happened? There was no project. That is why CDM and joint implementation are called as project mechanism. Yeah, so you have to constantly remember this because if you don't remember, Carbon trading and CDM can be very confusing for a first time. That's why I'm taking time to explain the difference. There, there was no project. It was simple accounting. Okay, I give you money. Now, my emission has got reduced by 200 tons. Here, it is not that. You're physically spending money and also spending technology 
to build a solar project in a developing country bangladesh now suppose let's say you you set up a 100 megawatt solar power project in bangladesh does solar power project help in reduction of dhg the simple answer is yes we all know that so annually whatever reduction has come in the country of bangladesh in the country of bangladesh because of 100 megawatt solar so how will they calculate the way they will calculate is 100 megawatt of solar how much co2 did it save had it been 100 megawatt of coal that's easy to do yeah technically that can be done so they will say that this many tons of co2 has been reduced this much they will very comfortably say now for one ton of co2 reduced they get what is called as a certified emission reduction cer one ton of co2 they get yeah now the question is physically in which country has the co2 emission reduced physically in which country has it reduced it has reduced in bangladesh but who has sponsored that project? United States. And who gets the credit? Credit goes to United States. So the fund and the technology flow in this direction and the carbon credits flow in that direction. So is this scheme of clean development mechanism slightly better than the carbon emissions trading? You know, if we were to ask you in a simple yes or no, what will your answer be? Clean development mechanism. Is it in any way better than? Okay, so people have already started responding. Yes, definitely. Okay, so four, five people have already. Okay, almost all of you are saying it is yes. Can you tell me one reason why you think it is better? One reason. I'll wait because I know you may have to type. One reason why you think this is better than the earlier one of. Uh, uh, what is it? Carbon emissions trading. Excellent, guys. Excellent. So, all of you have uh, said it correctly. Building long term sustainable infra rather than just having projects. It's actual project and not just accounting. Scalable and sustainable. Now, <clears throat> Now, uh, so this is definitely better. Now, this is a positive thing. Definitely, it's a positive thing. Now, I'll ask you another question. Does this bring down the net CO2 emission at the global level? Does this CDM bring down the net CO2 emission at the global level? In terms of simple yes or no, what would your answer be? Yes. You think it is yes. Perfect. Perfect. What was the case with the carbon emissions trading? Did carbon emissions trading bring the uh, net CO2 emissions? If you remember, no. So this is what you need to remember. Carbon emissions trading made no impact when it comes to net CO2 emissions. Clean development mechanism has made a difference. Okay. Now let's look at the criticism. Can anyone find any criticism in this? Anything, anything at all that you feel uh, uh, is wrong with this fault finding. No, I think that should come naturally first. Jokes apart, but uh, any, anything that you can think about that uh, no uh, major polluting for the major polluting. Excellent point. For the polluter country, the net em emissions remain the same. Globally, it has come down. Abhishek says the globally it has come down, but for the polluting countries, the net emission remains the same. Okay. More or less, that's the right answer. So the way people have articulated is, what does Kyoto Protocol say? Kyoto Protocol divides the country as one second.
sorry guys sorry for the disturbance my daughter had just come in with us <clears throat> okay so um yeah where was i ah so to rephrase abhishek's point major polluting countries net emission remains the same the other way to say that is bangladesh as per kyoto protocol what country is it is it annex 1 or non annex country a or na it is na correct now do non annex countries have any obligation to reduce their emissions there is no obligation so anyway that country which did not have any obligation you are still using that country to reduce your emissions but you may think but why do developed countries have to go about a circuitous round of putting a project in a developed developing country rather than their own developed country have, have you thought about why does us yeah and it's a one word answer or maybe two three words if you can write is also fine the question if you have understood this you have more or less mastered the international politics behind climate change to a good extent why does us invest in bangladesh in a solar project rather than investing in its own country and actually reducing the emission why does us do that excellent cost the answer is it's cheap cost it is always economical for a developed country to invest in a developing country at a much much economical rate here is where the exchange rate becomes very important you not go into so much of detail here the exchange rate becomes very important for example in us land acquisition very expensive labor very expensive so the laws and regulations very expensive uh, expensive in the sense if you violate them it's very expensive in bangladesh or any of the third world countries it is much more manageable so for the simple reason that it is very economical they just invest it in a developing country okay so this is about the clean development mechanism and what you need to remember is the co2 emission that is saved in clean development mechanism is called as ter certified emissions reduction